Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the uh, CPCA Advising sponsored Backstage Pack. Oh, I already did that. Backstage ah. Pass podcast. <laughs> Woo! I, I have to bleep Woo! that too. Editing right off the bat. We're off to a wonderful start, everybody. <laughs> um, I am I am a host for Mac. They them. Very nice to see you all again. I've been editing this podcast for a year, and now I can actually be on it. Uh, and uh, my co-host, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Nadia. They she. I have been in the office hiding for a year, so here I am. We've taken over. We have taken over. Rest in peace, uh, Ben and Sarah. They're not dead. They're just off doing better things. We miss you both dearly. We carry this on in your name. Uh, but with that, uh, let's introduce our guest, Jeremy. Please introduce yourself. Well, hey there. I'm Jeremy. I'm a junior music education major, and I've been working in the CPCA advising office as a peer advisor as well. And I'm living the dream. Let me tell you. Woo. That's that's bold. That's bold praise. Yeah. What what exactly do you mean by the dream? Can you describe just a regular day in the dream for me, Jer? Yeah. Can I call sure. you Jer? You may call me Jer. Nod. <laughs> um, I, I would say the dream is a bit of an exaggeration. I've been doing this and that. Going to classes, practicing. You know, I would say this year, most of my classes are actually pretty engaging. I know, a little shocking, but now I'm doing, because I'm music education, and a lot of the classes we're doing have to do with actual education and not just, you know, whatever nonsense that's so far removed from classrooms. It's a bit of a bummer. But I would say living in the dream for me entails going to classes I find actually engaging, practicing music that I enjoy playing, and being a peer advisor in the CPCA advising office. <laughs> Woo! Yes, yes. Then we're all living the dream, baby. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I guess to start off, uh, we can just, I'm going to just dive right into the wound you've already opened. Uh, music education. Sorry, that was, yeah, that was a really morbid way to put it, but I'm talking about college. Uh, <laughs> music education. No, I, uh, uh, I am someone who also loves arts education, but I'm curious as uh, to what drew you here. Maybe like Temple as a general, like broader question, but I guess more so I'm specifically, what brought you to music education? What brought you to uh, A, music to begin with, and then why you want to give it to others? Love it. Well, first off, as far as coming to Temple goes, in maybe, I think it was the summer before my junior year, I went to this music camp. And one of the guest conductors there was Dr. Patricia Cornett, which, as our viewers might know, is the director of bands here at Temple. And she did a whole spiel about how great Temple is. We have great programs, great music, whatever, whatever. And I uh, called her bluff and I came to Temple. She passed out like cards at the end and I emailed her and I came to Temple and it ended up being really great. As far as, as, far as music specifically, I started in fourth grade when, you know, they opened up choir to the elementary school and then band the next year. Um, I started, I'm a percussionist and I started on percussion as most people do because um, it seems the easiest, like you just hit things and hey, there you go. Now you know how to play it. I started with it because it was the easiest, but then I stuck with it because it was the easiest and I continued playing the easiest instruments. I will say, and this is a funny story in sixth grade, cause you know, there's snare drum, mal, percussion, timpani, everything. Oh yes. Uh, yes. And fifth grade, everyone was only on snare drum and maybe sleigh bells or tambourine or something. Um, in sixth grade, the girl, one of the girls who was a percussionist did mal percussion and I had a big crush on her. And she said, you should do mal percussion. And then I became like the mallet player at our school. Oh, I know. Shout out to you, Gwen. Um, <laughs> but and then I stuck with percussion ever since. Just just hoping Gwen will notice me. <laughs> Where's um, Gwen now? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere. Anyway. Jeremy's here. He's playing drums. <laughs> I'm just waiting. 
joking aside, um, then I, I stuck with it for a while. It was maybe eighth grade when I thought, well, music is pretty great. I can't imagine doing anything else for the rest of my life. So maybe I'll do something music related. Um, obviously, I, I thought, hmm, playing in an orchestra must take a lot of practice and be really hard. I don't want to do that. That takes effort. And I said, hmm, but being a teacher seems easy. I want to do that. <laughs> and that's what my, my rationale was in eighth grade. But as I got older, I started giving lessons to other percussion students and things like that. And in those lessons, I realized that teaching is an incredibly fulfilling thing to do. And seeing your students get better at what you're teaching them and seeing them be so passionate and excited to learn things, it's just a really nice feeling. And I wanted to keep doing that. So that's Temple Music, Music Education. Yeah, there you go. Beautifully wrapped up. Yeah, I love nice. I I love that you just said two things that me at both of those same ages would not have called easy. Like I wanted to be a drummer really badly, and a I got made fun of because I was tiny, and they were like, "You can't even reach all the drums," and I was like, "Oh no!" But the the main thing was that I could not. There is so much like separating body parts and giving them like minds of their own, where like. My arms love doing, you know, you guys see it. They love doing hand motions in a coordinated fashion. They love being in sync. So like the act of trying to do different things just fried my brain. And then also, I don't know many people who would call being a teacher easy. Yeah, I was going to say that. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't, the first thought in my head for an easy career would not be, hmm, let me just leave an impressionable mark on thousands of children. Let me just, that seems pretty easy. I, I mean, it say. is easy. Doing it morally is is <laughs> is the hard part. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. I could traumatize everyone at this school. An <laughs> entire <laughs> generation damaged. <laughs> I'm on it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> trauma aside, Jeremy, um, <laughs> What do you usually find yourself like doing at Temple, like extracurricularly? Like what ensembles are you in? Any clubs? Are you a fan of the NAFME and all that jazz? Well, as far as ensembles go, I'm in the concert band. The concert's this Thursday at 7.30. I don't know when this episode's going out. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, uh, it'll, it'll be out on Friday, but we'll be promoting it on social media. So uh, talk about it for the next like minute and I'll make it the Instagram post. Oh, yeah. The... Uh, mm, yeah, the concert band concert is this Thursday at TPAC, 7.30 p.m., under the direction of Dr. Lauren Riles. The percussion section is going absolutely hard, this concert, and I hope you all enjoy it. All kinds of crazy things. I'm doing some bass drum for this, some tambourine for this, some vibraphone for this. There's Ooh. one um, There's one chimes part. Beautiful. You're going to absolutely adore it. Yeah, so everyone be there at 7.30 at TPAC on Thursday night. Um, but that's Perfect. when the ensemble's Ad, ad break in. done. Brilliant. There we are. Um, I'm also in percussion ensemble, which is unequivocally going to rock whenever we do that. I think that's like a month from now. So no ad for that. I, can't, <laughs> I couldn't even remember the date off the top of my head. But um, as far as ensembles go, that's that. And you mentioned NAFME, the National Association for Music Education. Yeah, um, I did. Which is dope. Um, they offer a lot of resources and things like that. However, I can't go to the meetings <gasps> because I have other obligations Wednesday nights. Uh, I'll get into the whole RA business later. But um, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But staff meetings are always Wednesday nights, so I can't go to NAFME. But uh, for all... For any other music education people watching who might be, you know, younger or things like that, highly recommend joining and going to the meetings because some of the most valuable information I've learned was from my first semester actually being able to attend those meetings. So it's good stuff. So definitely do that. Um, as far as that, uh, extracurriculars and business like that, most of my time outside of classes and things like that, like I mentioned, was uh, through my job as an RA. I don't know if you had any RA specific questions if you knew that. About oh, me. oh, we'll oh, get yeah. There. Oh, yeah. we'll get there. Yeah. Well, then I'll, then I'll drop that details a little teaser and then we'll get back to it. Um, yeah, I guess in terms of like 
not even extracurriculars. I uh, because I feel like everybody's got, especially in like an arts major, you've got like the stuff you do for class, the stuff you do outside of class, but then there's like the stuff you do at home, the mm. just the, the the little things that you do for yourself. What is like your and it might not even be music, but like what's your little what is your like at home hobby that you just like love but would never do it for a job? I knit. And that's Ooh. something I absolutely adore doing. Ah! Are you a knitter as well? No, I just appreciate the craft. Of course. I mean, it's beautiful. In my sophomore year of high school, um, one of my friends said, uh, we had club period every like Friday morning or whatever. And she said, yeah, I'm going to knitting club. And we went, I said, we have a knitting club? And I made myself a scarf. And I've been absolutely hooked on it, crochet pun. I've been hooked on it ever since. And um, I certain I dropped out of doing it for a long time, but I just kicked it back up again and make myself a scarf. So whenever I have a good chunk of free time, I like to knit. It's just a nice way to keep the hands occupied, do some thinking, this and that. Um, I also like to read generally. Um, what genre are we talking? Well, I, I did a lot of reading over the summer. Most of it was nonfiction about like teaching and things like that, different methodologies and whatever, who cares? Um, but I went to the beach house with my friends over the summer and there was a, like one of those beach reads that had on one of the bookshelves. It was called One Dog Night. It was just some like crappy mystery story. And it was just so engaging. I loved every moment of it. So it's been a while since I've read fiction, but murder mystery, sure, sure goes hard. Oh, yes. I love, right. I love, I have, I have written so many terrible like murder mystery like from like the ages of eight to 20 I had continue I won't let it go I don't write them but when I was a kid there was an American girl murder mis not murder mystery but like mystery series and that hooked me in hearing those dolls just like get into hijinks classic classic yeah I don't remember uh like Oh, oh, my brain just disappeared. Uh, I'm going to move on to my next question because my thought Wait, really Wait, can we go into the RA yeah. stuff now? Oh, yeah, no, I was about to move on for... Uh, so, first of all, you have to tell us. You don't have to tell us what floor. Maybe don't diverge all the personal information. Yeah. But what dorm? I know, but I'm the audience know. should know. I'm an RA in Johnson Hall. And... Ooh, 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 ooh. I didn't stay there, but I love Johnson. Johnson's great. And I will say, I will divulge, I'm on the eighth floor. Eighth floor ooh. represent. Ooh. Did you say ooh or boo? I said ooh. Okay, man, better. Eighth floor <laughs> absolutely rocks. I know I have a couple of these residents in the um, uh, Center for Performing and Cinematic Arts advising team. I know some of them are, um, you know, might be on the Instagram and might follow us. So I hope they're tuning in. And this is a shout out to them. I'm not going to use their names, but this is a shout out to you. Okay, oh, well. And if they're not I watching, wish, then whatever. Dude, I, I wish my RA just called me out like that on a podcast. <laughs> oh my God. Mine would have awesome. never. Yeah. I, I No, my RA question. was awesome. <laughs> I have a question just to like rip off the band-aid. What is like the craziest like student story that like you've been like told or like ish uh, issue that has been like brought to you? Huh. Let me think what can be said. You know, oh, here's a good one. I had a bulletin board last year and I want to it was, it was my first year, so new RAs, don't do this. I had just a, a blank board with, like, the quote they had us put up, and I had blank sheets of paper, had markers, and a stapler, so they could draw little pictures and hang them up. Ah, so cute. No. Uh, some of them were very well drawn. Some of them were, you know, genitals. Some things were just silly little words on them, and some were the most beautifully drawn horrific things that you can imagine <laughs> um some of them were horrible enough that i think this has to be this has to be bad enough for me to take down and then you think about it and you look at it and you think no 
there's nothing actually wrong with this. This just sickens me to look at. <laughs> Could you give an example? I actually can't. Uh, you know. Oh what? my god. Well, hmm. Let me think. There's one of Carl Weezer's head on Goku's body flexing real hard. That was fine. There was one that was Phineas and Ferb kissing. And I thought, hmm, incest. Got to take that down. But they're stepbrothers. So it's so, not good, but it's not illegal, technically. Right. So it's just homophobic if I take it down. <laughs> uh, that's fair. Um, but... I, I guess looking back, they are kids. And if it, it is just like a nice wholesome kiss, but in any case, probably could have taken it down because, you know, it's kids kissing. But, you know, hindsight's 2020. Um, I would say that is my worst resident experience is that whole bulletin board. I'll have yeah, to privately I, show you both the videos. Oh, absolutely. I remember my RA also had a bulletin board, but she like, she filled it out before any of us had the chance to like get to it. She put a bunch of info about herself. She put like a bunch of rule floors that she had, like just straight up. And like whatever negative space she had, she put like, like she just like took, uh, uh, what's the like cardboard? It's not cardboard paper. What's the cardstock? Cardstock. Yeah. She just took like colored cardstock and would just cut out like cute little shapes, like not even anything that was like discernible, just like little goofy shapes, just to make sure that we couldn't put anything up on this board. Uh, and now I know why. Yeah, My RA wise. had like a similar thing to what you had, Jeremy, except it was like just a fully blank white background. And then in the middle, it said, this is what makes Whitehall Whitehall. And then me and my four roommates, or like the four of us, both, we all took a corner and just kept writing the word worms over and over and over again. And just like oh, filled it. Wow. Yeah. You're the resident I would have hated, Nadia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's where, and this is my slight experience as an RA at the time. I knew, don't let them draw on the actual paper, because then you'll have to tear it apart yeah. to remove it. Put on the little she did. paper to remove it. Yeah, there we go. Jeez, man. These kids. That's that's evil. You know, that's you know how hard it is to, to repaper up that board. Yeah, man. It's my least favorite part <laughs> of the job. The, the, the blood, time. sweat, and tears. No, I'm not undermining it. Being an RA must actually be. I mean, I, is it tough? Do you think it is? Well, um, I would say there are some hard parts. Like if you're you know, on duty on Halloween weekend and everybody's coming back screaming, yelling, drunk at two in the morning and half of them get locked out. So you need to go just sit down at the front desk and their keys. That can be tiring. In the day to day, you know, talking to residents, developing relationships, things like that. I think it's like swell. Um, Cause I'm, I'm a bit of a people person, I'd say. So, you know, hanging out and chatting with people isn't too difficult so i would say it's not too tough it's definitely i'd say it's definitely worth the money i get um i get free housing here and the free meal plan and i would say it's i would say it's probably reasonable work for the stuff you get out of it that's fair yeah i almost considered it uh but then by the time we would have had to have applied, I like I was just an idiot and I didn't realize that the 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 time in which it was supposed to be like approved had passed and I just didn't do it. And then COVID happened. So I was like, ooh, maybe I'm mm. a little yeah. maybe I'm a little glad I skipped that on that this time. But I also was considering it and then COVID happened. It just wrecked our year. I mean, yeah, yeah we're all people who already tend to work in a lot of uh public student org related things anyway so yeah. i guess it kind of tracks jeremy you're like the apex peer darn right the residential is it no <laughs> is it a what does ra stand for again residential resident a, assistant it is assistant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i feel like i was that's, gonna say agent yeah like it should be more like you guys are not who are you assistant to you're running the, the residents the, I oh you're yes you're an assistant for the people never mind there you go yeah. comrade Nadia there you go Nadia proud of you um I guess we can uh I just kind of want to poke your brain more about uh I guess the the work that you make what's like some of your favorite music 
What is stuff that like inspires you, makes you go, oh my God, I want to try and like do that, but better. Mm. Well, I'll go a few different routes here. First of all, as far as music to listen to, most things I'll listen to, um, you know, pop, rock, country, R&B, hip hop, the whole nine yards and everything. I dig. Listen you to. you make that face, Naughty. There is there is good country. Don't let stadium country turn you away. Mm -hmm. It's not nothing the only like, thing out there. There is nothing like a little you know guitar music and Look, some Glenn singing Campbell. from the soul. Yeah. Oh. You're a hater, Nadia. You gotta no, oh. Nadia. Li I'm telling you, someone who enjoys music, listen to Glenn Campbell. You're gonna have a good time. I'm not a hater. I'm an Aquarius. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Any case, in any case, <laughs> um, that's the music just generally that I like to listen to. Basically everything. Um, Barry Manilow. Yes. I'm so glad you're there with me, Nadia. Barry Manilow. Mwah. Nothing like a beautiful, impactful ballad of a love song orchestra with Barry Manilow singing up in front of it. Man, it's gorgeous. Copacabana keeps me up at night. I think yeah. I have a, a, a Barry Manilow record. I don't know which one I have. Uh, it's definitely not the one with Copacabana on it. It's like a different one because uh, mm. I haven't listened to it. My dad like gifted it to me. So you know what? You've, 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 you've all reminded me that I'm going to go wake up tomorrow morning and listen to some Barry Manilow on my record player. Very nice. Beautiful music by that Barry Manilow. It's so good. Um, but I would say as far as like, you know, what makes my heart go, ee, I would say Barry Manilow. Um, and hearing a really groovy vibraphone solo with some jazz. Whew, that's always nice. That makes my heart go. Woo. Um, let me think if there's anything just generally, as far as like performance, like creating music goes, let me think if there's anything. Um, because I'm a percussionist, so, you know, when it comes to snare drum, I might not be the most passionate, but with something like just a nice, beautiful marimba solo, what I ever happen to be working on, that always, I always like that. Last semester, I played, uh, feel free to Google this whenever you get the chance, Afternoon in March by Gene Kaczynski. And that was just, that was definitely one of the most beautiful solos I've played. And I, I really worked hard on that one to make it sound lovely and i think i did that incredible well i'll have to well i'm definitely going to try and come out thursday now i gotta see the show absolutely gotta come represent but uh i guess uh in back to your like your educating experience so how what kind of education were you involved with in high school like you were saying that you gave lessons to other students but like how did you get involved in that i know that there's generally like a, a peer camaraderie around or like amongst musicians but uh what was your like gateway experience gotcha well the main one basically how it went down is i worked really really hard for districts and regionals and even states at one point um and that meant that i was sort of like the unofficial section leader of percussion and there was this girl my senior year her junior year or something like that and she was joining band for the first time ever as a junior. Um, and I, because a lot of my experiences were, you know, middle school and then early high school, that developed a huge chunk of my knowledge as a musician. So coming in as a junior, not really knowing much of this, I figured would be pretty stressful. And I was like, um, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out, let me know, whatever. Um, and I started giving her lessons because she did take it very seriously and things like that. Um, we gave her like, you know, some of the harder parts to challenge her to get better at it. Um, I taught her how to tune timpani and I taught her how That's to tune hard. timpani. It is hard. And I taught her how to do it by knowing the intervals. Like if you tune this one to whatever note this is and you go here, that's a perfect fifth up. And I taught her how to sing the intervals and how to hear them in the drums to get the notes right. And I can, and one thing that always sticks with me is she had the biggest smile on her face when I was explaining this, because it's mind blowing to think about. And the fact that her mind was also blown by it uh, really instilled that sort of, you know, passion in education for me. So she was definitely the uh, first and biggest influence as far as my education career goes. 
that's beautiful that's absolutely that was very beautiful that that was like a movie moment coming from a film major oh my goodness what can i say (laughs) is there like a specific um setting that you want to teach in like specific age group or kind of good question that's a great question and i'm still sort of on the fence right now with teaching general music to inclusive populations I have an externship in a first grade class. And that's kind of cool because, you know, developmentally, there's still a lot they can learn. You can still like read stories and things to them and all that cute stuff. Um, But, you know, kids smell bad too. Yeah. And so that's why I would think maybe high school because Oftentimes, people in high school programs are more passionate about it and things like that. They might, you know, kind of do that stuff. But I also have a, I really like teaching general music, maybe, rather than maybe in a band setting. I feel Um, like that's a very hot take. Yeah, I don't know. I just think these concepts in music, like general music, it's really easy to bore someone and make them hate music by taking one of those classes. Yeah. And I think it needs to be done well to instill a sense of passion in music. And I want to be the one who's able to do that. So maybe either elementary school level in order to do that, or as far as instrumental music is concerned, and I don't know how I am with choral music yet. I'm not much of a singer. I'm still growing that part of myself. Um, but as far as instrumental music goes, I would think if I did, I would want it to be middle school because at that level, they're still developing. Again, they need to have good experiences to have that passion instilled in them. And they need to be able to, you know, build good habits starting at that age and things like that. And developmentally, that's kind of a big spot in their life. And I want to be able to, you know, guide them through that and assist with that. So to answer your question, no idea, but either elementary school, middle school, or high school. Gotcha. No, nice. no higher education here. Yeah, no higher education. Get college no. out of here. Yeah, no. Yeah, I I will say, do, uh, who have been some of your favorite professors here at least? Ooh. Name you can you name drop some people who you like. Shout out time. Well, she doesn't teach here anymore. Uh, Dr. Okina. Oh, Mwah. my girl. Love I her so loved much. her so much. Yep. She is easily one of the top tier people on the planet and also at Temple. Um, but right after I had her for Theory 2, I had Dr. DeVarin for th- Theory 3 and 4. And he is right up there as far as quality people goes. He's one of the, one of the best. So I absolutely love that guy. An absolute riot. Um, he's very understanding. Like if he messaged him saying, Hey man, had kind of a tough week. Could I do this assignment for Sunday instead of Friday? He'll say, yeah, sure. Drink lots of water. If you need anything, I'm here for you. Things like that. So love that guy. Makes my heart smile. Um, let me think generally if there's anybody else I want to specifically call call out. I would say, um, for theory one, two, and three, my TA was Sepper. Oh. Who's, you know Sepper? Yeah. Ugh, love that guy. He's a, I believe, composition yes. major. He does he does all that business. You'll probably see his name at, uh, I'm not sure what he does now, but he is a great guy. I absolutely loved having him as a TA for theory. Uh, the sweetest man in the entire world. Very wonderful. I'm sure, I hope we'll send this their way and they can watch and you compliment them and then they'll give you better grades. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Sorry. I, <laughs> I love, I love to cash in on the teacher's pet stuff sometimes because then yeah. I can just, because like I, I have been in a, a, a contemporary screen studies class, um, and honestly, I actually haven't been. My my writing has not been up to snuff uh, compared to some of the stuff that I normally do. And this professor like knows it too. And, like every time he gives me notes on my assignments, he's like, "What are you doing, man? Come on." And I'm like, "I'm sorry," uh, but uh, yeah, he, I like 
uh, made a post recently and it was one of those times where I had to miss class on Monday, but someone messaged me and they were like, oh, he used your discussion post like as an example in class. And I was like, oh, man, I didn't even get to be present for like my ego boosting. So sad. That's cute. Yeah, um, like good professors really go a long way and just making you go, well, wow, maybe I maybe I am learning. Yeah, maybe I am getting better at this. I oh. I think it might be time for Shout the lightning Kartik. round. I love you, Kartik. Oh no, absolutely. We are yeah. at uh, my timer's got us at about I think it's twenty eight minutes. Ah uh, yeah. So Jeremy, at the end of every podcast, there is a lightning round. So you have sixty seconds to and make I will it. Be timing. Yes, sixty seconds to make it through twenty questions. Okay. Are you ready? I'm actually it's genuinely a, nervous. It's a binary. You get yes. one or the other. Yes. No open-ended questions here. Oh, easy okay. peasy. Ready. Yep. All right. Let me, uh, Nadia, do you want me to count you in? Yeah, give me a countdown. All right. Three, two, a one. Hooter or Stella? Hooter. Cats or dogs? Cats. Broad Street Line or Market Frankfurt? Broad Street Line. Fall or spring? Fall. Saxby's or Richie's? Richie's. Tea or coffee? Hot chocolate. Ugh. Gritty or fanatic? Gritty. Deafness or blindness? Blindness. Milk steak or rum ham? Milk steak. Hands or feet? Hands. Water or water? Water. Virtue or sin? Sin. Cherry or white? Cherry. Teal or crimson? Teal. Pats or Genos? Say that again. Pats or Genos? Genos. Pub crawl or pub brawl? Pub crawl. Fireworks or bikers? Fireworks. Rats or roaches? Rats. Awkward Time's silence. Up. Oh! Oh! Oh, was, it, was that the last one? It was the last one. Oh, no! no. Jeremy, you got 19 in 60 seconds. Darn. It's because we'll you know. had me repeat. The the batting average on some episodes has been people will get like like about like eleven or thirteen. So like that yeah. was pretty good. That was, that was, you were, pretty that good. was a near perfect score. Yeah. Wow. And do I get to know the last question? It was awkward silence or unhinged ramble. Awesome. And the audience will never know my answer now. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, you have to tell me after the recording's over. Yeah, I can't live with that mystery. I will not. Oh, oh. no, wow. uh, that's such well, a sad way to end the podcast. Well, oh, yes, wow. Let, look at look at the the downer you've left us on, Jeremy. Ending on All a right. low note. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. Absolutely. Uh, you you have immaculate dad vibes, and you're a blast to talk to. I get that all the time. That's crazy. I know. Yeah, I the goatee is doing wonders. Thanks, guys. I'm getting Truly? shaggy vibes, but... Oh, uh, it is the shirt. Yeah, It honestly. is the shirt. A little bit, a little oh. bit, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thanks to everybody for listening. We're, like, back. We're going to be uploading. We're back. We got, we've got three guests lined up. That's crazy. So many guests. So we'll be having, uh, for the time being at least, uh, an episode a week. Uh, so oh. thank you all for listening. Uh, oh. uh, and we will see you all here next week for the next episode. Uh, thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.